The story of Cleopatra, an ancient Egyptian queen, continues to capture people's interest today. Many books, movies, and TV shows have been made about her, and she is well known all over the world. Even famous writers like Shakespeare and Bernard Shaw have created plays about her. One movie that stands out is directed by Joseph Mansiewicz, featuring Elizabeth Taylor as Cleopatra. This film is very popular and often shown on TV and rented from video stores. However, when it comes to studying Cleopatra from a serious, historical perspective, there is not much research available. This might be because the popular image of Cleopatra is often filled with myths and legends that could overshadow the truth. One example of this is a scene from Mansiewicz's movie, where Cleopatra enters Rome in a grand and spectacular way. She arrives on a platform carried by a giant sphinx, surrounded by dancers, and is pulled through the city by slaves. Thousands of Romans watch in awe and cheer for her. But this scene is actually made up. There is no historical evidence to support that this happened. Cleopatra did visit Rome in 46 BC, stayed in Caesar's estate, and later returned to Egypt after Caesar's death. The idea for the grand entrance might have come from the movie director's imagination, and it's okay because movies can take creative liberties. The real story of Cleopatra is fascinating enough without the need for such dramatic inventions. During Cleopatra's visit to Rome, many people, including scholars, have imagined the influence she had on Julius Caesar. They believe that she may have encouraged him to dream of having his own Hellenistic kingdom, which could explain some of the grand titles and honors he received towards the end of his life. Some even say that Caesar planned to move his capital from Rome to Alexandria, and even considered marrying Cleopatra, despite already being married and polygamy being against Roman law. However, most modern scholars don't believe these rumors. One thing that is often accepted as true is that Caesar placed a statue of Cleopatra in the Temple of Venus Genetrix, next to the goddess herself and his claimed ancestress. This information has been mostly accepted without question. But it's hard to imagine that the statue would have survived the Battle of Actium. And the rise of Octavian, who is now part of the lineage of Venus Genetrix. A more likely scenario is that the statue was one of the spoils taken by Octavian from Alexandria, and then dedicated in a Roman temple as a symbol of victory, not as a sign of Caesar's affection for Cleopatra, as Appian mistakenly believed. Cleopatra's stay in Rome is a fascinating part of history that has been mostly accepted without much questioning. She lived there for about a year and a half, staying in Caesar's private quarters, which upset many Romans. Historians haven't really explored the unusual nature of this situation. It's hard to understand why Caesar would bring Cleopatra and her entourage to Rome during a time of civil war. It could have made him lose support from the Roman aristocracy and others. Cleopatra, on the other hand, had just regained her throne in Egypt and needed to maintain loyalty there. Spending months in Rome while her hold on power in Alexandria was shaky doesn't make much sense. One possible explanation is that Cleopatra was deeply in love with Caesar and wanted to be with him all the time. However, Caesar left for wars in Spain soon after her arrival, and no one knew how long he would be gone. It's unclear if Cleopatra planned to wait patiently for his return. Overall, Cleopatra's stay in Rome raises many questions about her intentions and the impact it had on her relationship with Caesar and her rule in Egypt. During Cleopatra's stay in Rome, people might have wondered what she was doing there and how long she planned to remain. It's possible that she would have stayed indefinitely if Caesar were still alive. But after his death, she returned to Egypt quickly. It's surprising that she was able to take control of Egypt again without facing any challenges. Considering she had been gone for more than a year and a half and Caesar was no longer there to support her. Cleopatra was a strong and intelligent woman. She was fluent in nine languages, had a charming personality, and was knowledgeable in various subjects. She was part of the Ptolemy family, which had ruled Egypt for centuries. As a queen, her goal was to maintain the traditions of her royal line and restore its former glory. She faced many challenges, including family disputes, 
court intrigues, and civil unrest. Cleopatra had to use her intelligence and resources to overcome these obstacles even before she met Julius Caesar. In summary, Cleopatra was a capable and ambitious queen who faced numerous challenges in maintaining and reviving the glory of her royal line. Her return to Egypt after Caesar's death without any significant opposition suggests that she had already established herself as a strong leader before her time in Rome. When Cleopatra became queen at the age of 17 or 18 in 51 BC, she shared the throne with her half-brother, Ptolemy XIII, who was only 10 years old. They were married as per tradition. But soon, there were conflicts in the court as some of Ptolemy's advisors tried to take control pushing Cleopatra out of Alexandria. This happened around spring 48 BC. After being expelled, Cleopatra gathered an army and faced off against her brother's forces near Pelusium, a city in eastern Egypt, on the Mediterranean coast. This marked the beginning of their struggle for power. During the time of Cleopatra's visit to Rome, a big war broke out between the Romans. Pompey, who had lost to Julius Caesar, went to Egypt hoping for help. However, he was betrayed and killed by the Egyptians. This made the young King Ptolemy, who was only 13 at the time, an infamous figure in history, alongside people like Cain and Judas. When Caesar arrived in Alexandria, he said he would help settle the dispute between Ptolemy and Cleopatra. Ptolemy's advisors didn't want this because they hoped Caesar would leave and let them handle the situation. But Cleopatra had a plan. She hid herself in a carpet and appeared in front of Caesar at the perfect moment. This led to a big fight in Alexandria, and Caesar barely escaped with his life. In the end, Caesar won the war. Ptolemy's advisors were killed, and Ptolemy himself drowned in the Nile. Cleopatra became the queen of Egypt, sharing the throne with her younger brother Ptolemy XIV, who was only 12 years old. After the war, Caesar and Cleopatra went on a relaxing trip up the Nile, which later inspired many legends. After being driven out of Alexandria, Cleopatra managed to return with an army just a few months later to fight against her enemies at Pelusium. This shows that she had a lot of resources and support during that time. However, the exact source of this backing is not mentioned in the historical records, which is frustrating for those who want to learn more about it. At the beginning of her reign, Cleopatra showed interest in the traditions and culture of the Egyptian people. She participated in the installation of a sacred bull in Upper Egypt and later funded a birth temple there. She also supported the shrine of the Apis bull in Memphis and provided grain for the people of Alexandria during a time of drought and famine. Cleopatra's ability to speak Egyptian fluently, something no other Ptolemaic ruler had done, likely helped her gain support from the people. These actions and gestures probably allowed her to build a strong base of support in both the capital and the countryside. When Cleopatra was forced out of Alexandria in 48 BC, she had a place to go and people who supported her. However, we don't know exactly where she went. One source says she went to Thebaid, a region in Upper Egypt, but this is not certain. A more logical account is that she went to Syria, as mentioned by Appian and Strabo. The exact location of Syria is unclear, but it could be referring to several areas east of Egypt. In any case, Cleopatra managed to gather an army quickly, which shows how influential and respected she was. She was only 21 years old at that time, but she was already a significant figure. One piece of evidence for her authority is the coinage from Ascalon, a city in Palestine, which featured her portrait. This suggests that she had support and influence in areas close to Egypt. Overall, Cleopatra's ability to recruit a large army in a short time is a testament to her effectiveness and the strength of her appeal. She was a young woman, but she was already a force to be reckoned with. The story of Cleopatra's first meeting with Julius Caesar is also often embellished. Many people know the image of her being rolled up in an oriental rug and presented to Caesar. This scene has been shown in countless movies and TV shows, and scholars haven't really challenged it. However, this scene only appears in one source Plutarch's Life of Caesar. In reality, Plutarch wrote that Cleopatra was wrapped in bed clothes, not a rug. 
This scene doesn't show up in other historical accounts like Appian, Suetonius, or Dio Cassius. The truth is that Caesar decided to settle a dispute between Cleopatra and her brother Ptolemy, based on their father's will. Caesar acted as an arbitrator and called both siblings to his tribunal in Alexandria to resolve the issue peacefully. It's hard to believe that Cleopatra, as the queen of Egypt and a proud member of the Ptolemy dynasty, would make her first appearance to Caesar hidden in a rug. This idea just doesn't fit with her character and the importance of her position. When Julius Caesar arrived in Egypt, he knew that involving Cleopatra in the political situation was necessary for stability. He agreed to a joint rule between Cleopatra and her brother Ptolemy XIII, and even gave their younger siblings, Arsino and Ptolemy XIV, control of Cyprus, which was a Roman province. This decision wasn't because of infatuation with Cleopatra, but a way to solve the problems in Egypt. However, things didn't go as planned. A civil war broke out in Alexandria, Ptolemy XIII drowned, and Arsino was arrested by Caesar. Cleopatra's position in Egypt was now stronger, and she didn't need to go on a trip with Caesar to prove it. They might have shared a passionate moment during that trip, which led to the birth of their son, Caesar Ion. But Caesar's feelings for Cleopatra weren't all-consuming. He left Egypt to fight in other wars and returned to Rome. He didn't acknowledge Caesar Ion as his son during his lifetime and didn't mention him in his will. This suggests that their relationship was more about politics and passion than a deep, lasting love. When trying to understand why Cleopatra was in Rome, it's important to consider the historical context. Dio Cassius tells us that Caesar made Cleopatra and her brother Ptolemy XIV, who was also her husband, friends and allies of the Roman people. This makes sense because in ancient Rome, it was common for diplomatic relationships to be established or reaffirmed between Rome and foreign rulers, especially during uncertain times. Rulers from nearby regions like Pergamum, Bithynia, Cappadocia, and Syria had traveled to Rome in the past to seek recognition or legitimacy for their claims. The Ptolemies, who ruled Egypt, also had similar experiences. In the 2nd century BC, two brothers, Ptolemy Philometor and Ptolemy Eurygetes, both vied for power and traveled to Rome to present their cases to the Roman Senate. Caesar's hospitality towards Cleopatra ensured that there would be no embarrassment for Rome, as had happened in the past. Another Ptolemy, Eurygetes, tried to gain influence in Rome by offering marriage to a noble Roman widow, but she refused him. So, Cleopatra's visit to Rome had precedence and was likely for the purpose of establishing or strengthening diplomatic ties with Rome. Cleopatra's father, Ptolemy Elites, had also visited Rome to gain recognition for his rule in Egypt. His attempt to buy support from the Romans backfired, and he was expelled from Egypt. He later returned to Rome to plead his case and provide more money to Roman leaders. As a result, he received official recognition as a friend and ally of Rome. This shows that there were clear reasons for Cleopatra to visit Rome, such as seeking official recognition and strengthening her position at home. It was common for foreign dignitaries to be treated with respect and provided with suitable accommodations during diplomatic visits. There was no need to create a grand, luxurious entrance for Cleopatra, as it would have caused offense and served no purpose. In reality, Cleopatra's arrival in Rome was low-key and uneventful. She was just another foreign ruler coming for a diplomatic mission, and most Romans probably didn't even notice her. The extravagant entrance scene in Mansiewicz's movie is purely fictional and has no basis in history. Cleopatra's visit to Rome was initially for a specific purpose, to gain recognition, sign a treaty, and strengthen her power in Egypt. However, it's unclear why she stayed in Rome for over a year and a half especially since her presence wouldn't have been needed for the official ceremonies. If she wanted to maintain her position in Egypt, staying away for so long would be risky, as she would miss important religious events and have to leave the government in the hands of others. One possible explanation is that Cleopatra didn't actually stay in Rome for that long. After securing an alliance with Rome, it would make more sense for her to return to Egypt and take control of her country. Cicero, 
a contemporary and eyewitness, provides evidence that Cleopatra left Rome shortly after Caesar's assassination, which happened around the Ides of March in 44 BC. If she had stayed in Rome for 18 months, as many historians assume, Cicero would have mentioned her presence in his letters during that time. However, there are about 200 of his letters from that period, and none of them even mention Cleopatra. This suggests that the idea of her staying in Rome for 18 months might be incorrect. In Suetonius' biography of Julius Caesar, there's an interesting detail often overlooked. It says that Cleopatra was invited to Rome, received the highest honors and rewards from Caesar, and then sent back to Egypt. This implies that Cleopatra left Rome with Caesar's blessing. If this is true, it could explain why Egypt remained stable during her absence. There's also a letter from Cicero to his friend Atticus in June 44. Cicero expresses his dislike for Cleopatra, but the exact reason is unclear. He mentions a promise of some literary material from her that was never delivered. This could suggest that Cleopatra was no longer in Rome at the time, and her representatives were handling her affairs. It's even possible that the material was supposed to come from the famous library in Alexandria, but this is just a speculation. The main point is that Cleopatra might have left Rome before some events took place. After Cleopatra's first visit to Rome, she returned before the Ides of March in 44 BC, but we don't know exactly how long she had been gone. Caesar had only recently returned from his wars in Spain and Gaul, so it's possible that Cleopatra came back to discuss important matters with him. One of the things Caesar was planning was a major overhaul of the Roman provinces, including a policy of colonization in both East and West. This would involve changes in how the provinces were managed. Before this time, some Romans had even considered making Egypt a province. So, it's likely that Cleopatra wanted to be in Rome to protect her claim to Egypt and to have a say in the fate of Cyprus, an island that was once given to her siblings by Caesar but could now be at risk of being taken back by the Romans. This would be a natural reason for her to return to Rome and meet with Caesar. After Caesar's death, it made sense for Cleopatra to return to Rome. She might have come back around the beginning of 44 BC. However, she couldn't stay in Rome after Caesar's assassination because she needed to protect Egypt during a time of uncertainty. Cicero, a Roman politician, described her departure as a flight, but didn't seem too concerned about it. When Cleopatra left Rome, she likely took her son Caesar Ion with her. There's not much information about her consort, Ptolemy XIV, during this time, which suggests that this trip to Rome was separate from her previous visit. However, some details about Cleopatra's stay in Rome might be exaggerated or even false. For example, the idea of her having a gilded statue in the Temple of Venus Genetrix or turning Caesar's rule into a Hellenistic monarchy might not be true. The same goes for the grand entrance into Rome that was shown in the movie. When we remove these fantasies and focus on the reality, a clearer picture emerges. Instead of spending 18 months in Rome, Cleopatra's visit was probably much shorter and more focused on her own kingdom's needs. The idea of her staying in Rome for a long time while Egypt was in chaos doesn't make much sense. So, the story of Cleopatra's time in Rome might be less dramatic and mysterious than we thought. Cleopatra's visit to Rome in 46 BC had a clear purpose, to get official recognition and a treaty of alliance from Caesar. This would strengthen her position in Egypt and give her respect in the Near East. While it's possible that she and Caesar had a romantic relationship, it's not the main focus of her trip. After achieving her goals, Cleopatra could have returned to Egypt, but she had another reason to visit Rome later on. She wanted to defend her dynastic rights when the Caesarian government was changing its policies in the eastern Mediterranean. Even though Cleopatra had to leave Rome earlier than planned due to Caesar's assassination, she managed to protect Egypt and keep control of Cyprus. Cleopatra was not just a seductress or someone controlled by Caesar. She was the powerful queen of Egypt, Cyrene, and Cyprus, a part of the Ptolemaic dynasty. She was also the mother of Caesar's son and skillfully used her intelligence and charm to advance the interests of her kingdom. 
Cleopatra played a significant role in shaping Rome's actions and would continue to do so in the future.